Welcome men to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast, where we are vigorously equipping men to pursue biblical manliness. My name is Jarrett Samuels. I'm the host of the podcast. Men, as always, I like to begin by thanking you for listening to or watching today's podcast episode. When you get the opportunity, make sure you visit the Pursuit of manliness.com you can find this podcast episode there is a whole category what am i saying there's a whole catalog of other podcast episodes you can learn more about the herd our men's retreat pursue wilderness see what is available in the gear store the one i'm highlighting right now because you have about 11 days left to register is tribe Tribe 13, I cannot believe we're in our 13th or starting our 13th session of Tribe. It's a discipleship community within the pursuit of manliness. 13th session, each session lasts six months at a time. The next session, the one that is open right now, will begin on December 1st and run until the end of May. Now, registration for the next session of Tribe ends on Sunday, November 19th this year. Okay, the quality and the caliber of the men within this community, man, I'm telling you, is unlike most of your experiences. The, the, the guys that are in tribe, the conversations we are having for me personally, I'm just speaking for my own existence, my own experience in life is unlike anything I've been a part of. These are high caliber humans. We talk about things that are serious. We, t- we pursue Jesus. We want to be better men of God, uh, better husbands, fathers, and so on. Some guys are married. Some guys are single. Some guys have been walking with Jesus for four decades. Some guys have been walking with Jesus for four weeks. Uh, we joke about a lot of stuff. It's just a really unique community that no matter what you do for a living, no matter what your schedule, there is constantly something going on in tribe. We have men from the U.S. to Australia, okay? So I don't know all the time zones, but I'm telling you, if you travel for work and you're busy and you say, man, I don't got time to make a small group. I don't got time to be in my men's group at church. I don't have time. Man, I get it. I totally get it. These guys don't either. And so what you'll have is the complete six-month outline given to you when you sign up. Uh, the first package that arrives has your field guide in it. It'll tell you for the whole six months, this is what we're doing. And if you look at that and say, man, I can't make these calls or that calls, whatever, there's constantly something going on within the community. Again, our, our brother in Australia, we got a brother uh, right now in Japan, in the UK, Canada, all over the place. There's constantly West Coast, East Coast, whatever. So no matter what you do, no matter what your, your schedule is, I'm telling you, there's constantly a conversation taking place. And it's powerful, and it's cool to be a part of it. So make sure you visit thepursuitofmanliness.com forward slash tribe. There you can find out a whole bunch of information. There might be a link broken or something. I don't know. Someone just emailed me and said it took them to YouTube. But if you go to the gear store, you can find it there. Okay, now let's get into today's conversation. I'm talking to Daniel Joseph. Daniel Joseph received a graduate degree organizational psychology while serving in the United States Army as a combat engineer commissioned officer, and sapper platoon leader. This guy is sharp, okay? So Daniel and I had a conversation, oh man, it's been a number of weeks ago, and uh, he he sent me, he was kind enough to send me his book, Backpack to Rucksack, Insight into the Leadership and Resilience by Military Experts. Um, This is not a book you're going to sit down and read in one day, okay? This book is girthy. There's some thickness to it. Um, I'll try to post on social media. You can see it. You can find it on Amazon or wherever. Um, I want you to listen to what Daniel has to say. He's got a great heart. Again, the guy's incredibly sharp. And uh, the link to purchase, if you want to check it out further, Backpack to Rucksack, and also his website will be in the show notes. Men, it's time for today's conversation. Let's pray. God, thanks for letting us uh, be here today. Thank you for the conversation we're about to have. Uh, God, I thank you for thank you for uh, Dan. I thank you for that for us to connect the way we have, and uh, pray you continue to bless him and what you're doing in his life. And you talk about the guys at church. Please put good good men, good solid and sound men in his life. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about is is vital to to a lot of men and women, and for the women that listen to this as well. But God. I pray for those who are going to listen. Maybe they're in their trucks. Maybe they're uh, at you know work or um, anywhere, walking the dog. It doesn't matter. I pray you meet them right where they're at. 
and, and something I believe Dan's going to say is exactly what they need to hear. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bro, these fighter jets could not be louder. I'm, Can't hear it? I don't know if you heard that. They're just like, man, they're loud. It might give me a little more uh, credibility with the military it's cool, guys. Right? If I can yeah. hear the – yeah. Maybe, so when I did that out in the garage the – seals- Maybe the seals will start throwing sim rounds. Then we'll have like, you know, be awesome. next thing I know, Goggins is trying to get on here. It's just a oh, whole thing, dude. man. You don't too need intense. that, but he's too intense for me. Too intense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, man, why don't you, uh, outside the fire jets, why don't you take a minute, introduce yourself, who you are. We'll get into you talking about your book. Yeah. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Dan. Uh, I was in the army, uh, got out last year and was a combat engineer. I joined at 32 years old. So definitely an old guy for, for what I did. Um, really good, good group of men that I met throughout my time there and served with, uh, I was never a combat deployed. Uh, I was in a non-deployable unit, but we were training people in war gaming out in the desert to, to get other units certified to go deploy. And, uh, I, I served with a lot of combat veterans. So I wrote a book about the psychology of basically leadership and how to be a great leader, not because I've done it, on my own or that I have this like innate sense of leadership about myself, but I was mentored by some really good dudes in the military of all different branches. And what they taught me before I joined really resonated with combat veterans that I worked with. And I had a soldier who um, survived his suicide attempt my last week as platoon leader. And he wrote the intro to my book as a survivor of suicide. And the numbers are insane right now for active duty as well as for veterans. And my friend Austin, good dude, really good guy. He was an enlisted Marine. He's an army officer now. And at the time I wrote my book, 12 men from his unit committed suicide after Afghanistan, which is unfathomable, double digit suicides. You know, it just even one is, is bad enough. Right. And then after publishing my book, the 13th guy killed himself. So these stories, um, these men around me that I've served with and I've been with, you know, throughout my time in the military really touched my heart and impacted me in a big way. They shaped who I am. And so I wrote this book to kind of give a voice to the voiceless, to go over concepts of leadership that entail what it's like to, to love the people around you as you lead them, to take in consideration thoughts about anxiety, thoughts about stress, what feeling states are and how to disclose that, how to discuss it, how to process it and get these things out of your body. Uh, I worked on a master's in psychology while I was in the army. So I throw in a bit of neurophysiology in there and talk about the brain, talk about the hardwiring and the mechanics of what's inside of our skull to, to give men language to discuss what they're, they're going through. And um, jujitsu plays a huge part in my self-awareness. I had to get beat up and choked out on the mats in, in a lot of different ways by some really good dudes to learn how to handle my own ego and my pride, how to keep my mouth shut and be respectful and just fall in line with a tribe of men that have this primal energy that's unlike anything I've ever experienced before. So I write in the book about how jujitsu plays a big part in situational awareness and just knowing how to approach somebody, read their body language, know when they're ready to fight or if they're more accessible and approachable. So all of this applies um, on the mats, in uniform, in the civilian world, wherever we are. And especially with men, there tends to be a lack of language when it comes to feelings. And, And I get it, but I've seen enough dudes try to kill themselves and struggle with suicidality to to just stay quiet you know okay as a rule of thumb i typically only ask questions that i think i know the answer to or i know i'm going to lead you to a place this is a question you may you're not even you may be not even considering because uh, it's just come to mind you mentioned jujitsu mm-hmm. and i was on the social media day and saw someone else do it, has this thing been around forever it feels like everybody in the man space is doing jujitsu now like has this do you know has this been around is this suddenly a popular thing like what so is it just the I, right people doing it i started jujitsu like five six years ago and it's been around that's kind of what i thought when i started was like man how long has this been around so technically i think it was developed in like the 1800s or 1900 it was, it was a long time ago you know, the evolution of jujitsu and how it started from roots in japan and brazil and and all of that but 
uh yeah it's been around for quite a while and definitely i'm in san diego so this is a huge it's like the mecca of jiu-jitsu so kind of what happens is a lot of the brazilians will come here to san diego and then what happened was americans were picking up jiu-jitsu right and then they they'd make it evolve outside of the traditional orthodox norms of jiu-jitsu so then they'd go back to brazil or they'd fight in these worldwide competitions they'd, they'd compete not fight that's not the right word they'd roll basically is what we call a spar and then what would happen is the brazilians would say hey you you just took our moves and you changed it in a way that we would never do and it wasn't necessarily that they were debating the fairness of it but they had said hey the americans are are taking this stuff to a whole new level and so that's kind of what happened as um, it moved away from traditional brazilian jiu-jitsu there's some gyms now that straight up call it american jiu-jitsu and uh there it's definitely a sport that's that's evolving a lot and I, I get to train here with uh, Jocko Willink. I'm at his gym. So Dean Lister is one of my coaches and they're just amazing world renowned dudes. And they're all so humble and so approachable. And we, we get after it, as they say, it's, it's a great place. I appreciate you answering that. Cause I, again, I saw it today and I thought another guy who's doing good for you. Uh, I, I got a friend who's in martial arts. He's going to kill me when he hears that question everyone's got to learn it bro because like you never want to be that guy that stands around when someone's getting assaulted or someone's getting hurt and what's cool about jujitsu is so the reason i one of the reasons i started it i was i owned a business before i joined the military and i was at starbucks and um this this guy came in like clearly on drugs and he picked up a stool and was going to strike um one of the managers it was a bunch of women and then me and the manager were the only males in the room right and there's straight up like a grandma next to me and this dude picks up a chair, like, and these are metal chairs, and he holds it back, and he's about to swing it at this dude's face, right? And he doesn't. He, like, throws it and then jumps back in his vehicle, like, super intoxicated, super drugged up, and just drives off. Like, anyway, that moment, my heart was pounding, right? I didn't know what to do. I was looking at this grandma next to me, like, if I have to defend her, other than use my face as just, like, the backboard to take the impact, I don't know what else to do. So I hit my buddy Tim up. And uh, Tim started a gym because of the guys here in San Diego, Dean Lister and Jeff Glover helped them out. Anyway, so Tim, uh, I went home to visit him and he brought me to the gym. Here comes a fighter jet. And uh, he, he taught me how to do it, man. And it gave me this awareness that no matter how much, dude, like if you get punched in the face and you fall on the ground, you're getting kicked and you know jujitsu, you can technically break the guy's foot as he's kicking you. That's the cool part. There's no, when you, when you take it to the ground and you build up, and then do Muay Thai, do boxing and all of that to be, you know, holistic. But when you're on the ground getting pummeled and you know how to break the guy's kneecap, that's pretty cool. It's because it, we do leg locks and heel hooks and all this stuff. So it's just conceptually, you, you're, you realize you just become more gritty. Sorry, I could talk about this for days, but. I like it. I like grit. Okay. I don't like my foot broken, but um, let's get to your book. You, you write, hurry up and wait urgency can make everything an emergency. You know, if everything is important, I've said this, then nothing's important. And, and this creates yeah. anxiety in people and stress in people. And this yeah. is how a lot of people are functioning. And whether you're, you're military, active, retired, or you're just a guy, like this is a lot, there are a lot of people living like this right now. You write mm -hmm. about how leadership impacts this. So if you're leading, so if I'm a dad, or if I'm in the military, or if I'm a CEO, or whatever, and you're in those, those moments, leadership has a great impact on the anxiety level of those around you. How does that play out? So, yeah, man. I mean, look, we train. So, like I said, I was in a non-deployable unit. And so what we do is we try to simulate combat as much as possible, right? So there's, there's people stressing you out left and right. We're doing night convoy movements. People are throwing sim rounds at the vehicles while you're trying to drive with like NVGs on, which are extremely limiting with your peripheral. And we're doing these massive convoy movements up and down ridge lines. And you don't want to roll a vehicle over and, you know, get your guys killed or hurt, which, which happens. So there's this pressure in the military where we train as if it's warfare, right? So go, you got to be at this grid coordinate at this time and everybody better be there. Got to get your accountability, you know, get your sensitive items like weapons and all that accounted for and get ready to step this way and that way. And there's always people pressuring you. And, you know, while you're doing your convoy movement or while you're preparing for the next mission, the mission set or training, if there's people barking at you, I want you to do this and I want you to do this and you have to do this as well and, and go to this grid coordinate, go here and do, and you're just sitting there and the soldiers are feeling this, right? Everyone's feeling it. Um, sometimes it's like 127 degrees during the day and you're in full kit. And then it, it, it's just a lot of pressure just built in. 
But when you have a leader that comes in there and they talk to you with that condescending tone, or they talk to you as if they're losing their mind, so they're putting pressure on you, it's it, it feels like desperation. And um, soldiers pick up on that. You know, they're they're very keen on knowing who's out of whack and who's in control and who's calm. And and, and a lot has has to do with your primal system, your vagus nerve, your limbic brain. It picks up on these things. There's communication is 90% nonverbal or more. So you can see in somebody's eye contact, you can see in how rigid they are and kind of that, how frustrated they are. It, leaders will lose credibility if they lead like that very quickly. And that's just leading normal soldiers, just soldiers who just showed up, right? New kids. But if you're talking about leading combat veterans, dudes that I know who have been blown up, been shot at, you know, ripped their dudes out of burning Humvees and they're still in uniform, still working. They didn't retire. They have body parts that don't work anymore because, you know, they got ravaged by war, but they're still there next to you. Right. And you're supposed to lead these guys. Imagine if I lost my mind and I start yelling, we got to hurry up and get here. And there's just, and, and there's a dude who's a combat vet, right? He's looking at me. This guy is freaking out over some little order he got. And he has no idea what it means when somebody's life is actually on the line. And that's where, I really wanted to maintain self-awareness to respect these guys, right? Because they're quiet. You know, they're not, they don't go around saying I've been to war and I know how to, that's not how they operate. They don't, they don't talk like that, but they're quiet. You know what I mean? They're quiet and they're humble a lot of times, dude. Uh, and, and you just see them thinking. So you go up to them like, Hey bro, wh what's up? Like what's going on? Or how did that, how did you perceive that going down? They'll tell you like, Hey brother, like Austin would talk, he's this Southern boy, right? So Austin would pull me aside and be like, all right, brother, you saw that guy yelling at you. He's trying to get you flustered. And when you stay calm, everybody sees you stay calm. And that's good. Like, and getting kudos from a guy like him, a brother like him, hell yeah. Like I, I look at everyone else and I'm just like, I don't care. I'm not gonna, they can make me want to stress out and lose my mind, but I'm going to look at the dudes, the solid dudes who I respect and I'd want to go to war with and I'll go up to him and ask his perspective. And that's what keeps me calm. So they tell me when something's an urgency, right? Uh, when there's urgency, when it's an emergency, whatever it is. Uh, and if it's not, okay, then I'm going to mellow out and we're going to get the mission done. We're going to get the job done and, and we'll move with a sense of purpose, but we're not going to be stressing other people out and just making it look sloppy and making it feel rushed. You know what I mean? But this is a complex discussion because there's hasty movements and deliberate movements. There's there's a lot to, to unpack, but overall, you don't want to look like an idiot, an idiot in front of your guys. You know what I mean? So no, never. Um, yeah, and there's such a there's such a dichotomy here because there is an element of being trained to handle stressful situations. Every single person, no matter what you do, needs to understand that. There's there's a character being developed and whatever. And then there's the realization that. These, these these are men or these are colleagues. And so depending on, you talk about hmm. your sphere of influence, military, obviously different. When you first get off that bus, white t-shirts, whatever, they're trying to build you into what they hope you become. Once you become it, you're, that conversation should be different. It's like being a trainee or a, a, a freshman on a, a varsity football team or whatever. Like you're earning your, your, your some collateral here. Hmm. And so the, the, you talk about a lot, and I we are big proponents of this within the pursuit of manliness. It's about one another. And, and sure. this, having this shared experience, as you just said, someone coming to you and having that conversation, it's powerful, man. Well, how do you keep guys in a place where they're willing to have those conversations? Because the dangerous thing, like the guys you talked about, all the suicides, it happens a lot because they've pulled away from that and nobody's having yeah. those conversations. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing I learned, so you have kids, right? Okay. Soldiers are like kids, dude. And, and I don't mean this condescendingly. I mean that they're highly intelligent. And they pick up on the nonverbals. They pick up on stuff that as a parent, somebody would, you'd be surprised at what kids pick up at what people see, right? Soldiers are the same way. They know who's got their head on straight and who doesn't. And they know when someone's disingenuous and they know when somebody's being authentic. And this is a human principle in general. This isn't just, you know, but I'm speaking from, from the military perspective, right? As a leader, but um, what, what I was told before I joined is basically like keep my mouth shut and don't talk down to people don't use my age as a way of saying oh i have all this wisdom and you know let me teach you things because there are people who like to do that and, you know people want to be validated it's, so it's it's common to, to stand up um and kind of yeah anyway get a spotlight but but when you're quiet and you're you still stay approachable that's when 
people will talk to you. That's what I noticed is, is that you're not, you know, especially in the military, because everyone's getting somebody breathing down their neck about something, right? But when you're that calm presence and you just stay quiet, you, you keep your head on, you know, keep your head about you, as Kipling says in that poem, there are people that notice that and they move away from the noise and they seek out quiet counsel. And it allowed me to have some really deep discussions with guys about life, about what's going on around us. And it's amazing to me what people will want to pour out if you give them the chance. And I had some pretty emotional moments, man, uh, with some combat vets that told me about stuff they saw in war that they've never told another human before. Um, that's pretty deep. You know, we're talking like moral injury type stuff. We're talking things that they've never told their wife. They've never told therapist. And, um, and that came from being that person that they knew they could, you know, they knew they could trust me with some stuff, which is a huge honor to hear and not how I used to be in my younger years. If I wasn't mentored by some really solid men, I wouldn't have gotten to that point, but it allowed me to be that person who, um, yeah, you just contrast with the noise. That's the biggest thing. There's so much noise, dude. There's so many people barking and acting tough or trying to be dominant. And, um, it's not what it's about, man. There's something about silence that's so powerful. And I've learned that again, a lot of it comes from the mats and jujitsu. Like you'll never see a black belt show up and say, I'm the black belt. I'm the tough guy. You're, we know, dude, they can break every bone in my, in our, in our bodies with their pinky. They don't have to announce that they're extremely gentle people. Like when a black belt touches you, they grab you. Like it's a very soft until they, they want to friggin' do the choke or execute then your feet are towards the ceiling or whatever, but they throttle it. Do you know what I mean? They're not always on. They have these moments where it's on. And then, and that says a lot about leadership to me because it's a quiet, the quietest dude in the room, the most humble dude in the room is the black belt a lot of times, man, because they have nothing to prove. So I tried my best to do that in the military. Not that I'm, it, I, I don't want to sound like really big headed, but I just tried to be respectful with how I conducted myself. And then, um, it was really cool, man. It led to some, some deeper friendships. You know, the guys that were in my life were just, they're brothers to me. They're not just friends. Oh man. I, when you get beyond the surface level, you realize every guy is far more insecure than he's going to admit. We all got struggles. We all got things that we're working through, walking through this podcast called a quiet life First Thessalonians four eleven and 12. And, and that's what we talk about. And there's some guys like, Oh, that sounds so soft. That's you don't understand. Yeah strength under control you don't understand the ability to say i don't need to get in that you don't understand the ability to say oh i'm getting involved in that you know whatever that is if everything matters nothing matters and so you have to determine what's most important and you talk about calm and we talk about a quiet life is tied to humility and mm -hmm. provides countless benefits you touched on a couple what are some benefits of living this calm humble quiet life from your perspective so from the men I've seen, man, like, um, so one of the chapters I write about, so each chapter is dedicated to a different dude. One of them, I, I, I change his name because for, we call it OPSEC, operational security. He's still act. He, he's a green beret. Um, what did I put his name as in the book? It's Greg in the book. So Greg, uh, he, he's a, he's an awesome dude. And he, right. He told me about keeping my mouth shut, staying humble, not bragging in the military because, those dudes get a spotlight for bad, you know, and they get targets on their back, right? The instructors will slam them, the cadre will slam them. And so he lived out calm and humility. Um, because calm really ties into that when somebody tries to ruffle your feathers and get you off centered, activate your nervous system and get that fight flight going. If you don't feed into that, and you just stay calm, he would call it being the gray man, just be the gray man, he'd say like, don't, don't try to stand head and shoulders above the guys. You work hard and your work ethic will get you those brothers that you want. You'll start rubbing elbows with guys left and right that you wouldn't have found if you were out there just talking, you know, a big talk or whatever. And so humility and calm are very closely married to one another, you know, in relationship. And so many do to live that out. Um, and one of the cool things about calm that we were taught is how calm is contagious. Like panic is contagious, but calm is contagious also. And we had the story, like I'll, I'll never forget it. There's this EOD who came and talked to us about how this guy, this IED went off and it blew up the convoy. And um, one of the guys was just like 
face cleaved off. I mean, he was just, it was, it was bad. It was a bloody mess. And the dude was clearly not going to make it, but was still breathing. And the medic was panicking and was um, going to lose his mind because he didn't know what to do because, you know, it, it was a horrible situation. And the EOD saw all these soldiers, man, staring at the medic. And as the medic was starting to clearly get like, I don't know what to do. The other guys, it was going to turn into a horrible situation for everyone. So this EOD ran up to him and grabbed the medic and said, listen, look around you, dude. The guys are staring at you. You need, you know what to do. You've been trained on this. Do what you can to save this guy's life. And the medic immediately went to work and started working on the dude. They lost him. But the point is the medic didn't panic. And everyone else, when they saw him working on that guy, everyone else just they started, you know, pulling security and doing their thing and the panic went away and it became a calm situation. So he told us as leaders, you better be ready to, to understand that you're going to influence the guys around you for better or worse. And the more calm you are, the more calm the guys around you are going to be. And that was one of the most impactful stories I've ever heard in the military, man. The way he described it was just oof, like, how could you not respect these dudes, you know? A lot of this, and we'll get into it, is um, a, a mind game, if you will. Your mind is a battlefield. The things you think, I, we talk about this, you know, don't be conformed, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be able to test and discern what the Lord's will is, that what you tell yourself matters in the midst of calm or in the midst of chaos. That does matter because you will respond. Your body responds. People around you respond. Um when when guys aren't open with other men uh, or particular brotherhood guys that they respect whatever that battlefield gets more and more intense and so how do how do we pursue health when it comes to keeping our mind healthy practicing calm practicing getting around the right brothers telling them what we need to tell them so that we keep uh keep this brain functioning the right way so i noticed that uh for me i had to reach out to a group of dudes like a small group uh, I had a mentor from one of, from like a recovery group I was in tell me that there's, you have a, an, an acquaintance circle, a friend circle and an intimate circle. And that intimate circle is like the three to five people like max that you, you know, if they tell you to jump off a cliff, you're jumping, you're not going to think twice. You're going to jump because you know, they love you. And so for me to, to stay calm and keep a healthy mind, I needed to reach out constantly. Um, a lot, most of these dudes were in the military. And so I'd reach out to them if, if I, had a leader that I, I couldn't stand, or if there's a situation that got dangerous, you know, whether it's for the Joes or for myself or whatever it was, I would have them basically on speed dial and do my best to, to get their perspective on things to recalibrate because my mind, and again, these environments are designed to push us out of our comfort zone, but for prolonged periods, cortisol is not supposed to be in the body that long at such a high level and adrenaline, but when it's nonstop dude, you know, cause we have 24 hour mission sets and, you got to sleep by your radio and you got to sleep by your, your comms. And you're always ready for oh, just these last, it's, it's crazy making dude. Cause you don't know when to sleep. A anytime something moves, you're just, you're awake. Like, yeah, what's going on? They're like oh, nothing, dude, go back to bed. So, so, you know, that was our nervous system was high enough. And then we come back to base and it would still be high because we're, yeah, it was just, it was, it was a crazy op tempo. And so I'd have these guys that I would reach out to and, um, just to remember what's important. And it always comes down to the people. It always comes down to how you treat others and how you care for others. That's the the baseline of what you should be concerned about. But there's it's obviously easier said than done because there's so much more thrown on your plate and it's very distracting. And so it's important to, to recalibrate your mind. And then I talk about self-care a lot as well. Self-care is huge. So just again, zeroing out the noise, finding your finding solace, finding solitude to recharge your battery, finding those people that restore you and uh, thinking on, on things that will take the chaos out of your mind. You know, there's, yeah, there's a lot to be said there and I'm not the best at it, but um, it helps a lot. Otherwise self-medication will skyrocket if, if we don't find ways to kind of turn that pressure valve and release that pressure for sure. And we just say, turn off the noise. Turn it off. Put the phone down. Turn the TV off. Go outside. Go get an eat an orange. Drink some water. Go do healthy things. Get around high caliber men. Can't find them. Be one. You'll attract some high caliber guys. So <laughs> that's a great quote. Hey man, what uh, what do you tell the guy who thinks he found this episode today by accident? Who might be dealing with exactly what you're talking about right here? Can you just give him give him a little bit of advice here? 
I mean, the only thing that stands out when I'm asked that question is saying you're worth it. And I learned that from my buddy, uh, JP Lane. He's a double amputee. He um, is a combat engineer also. And a 200 pound IED took out both of his legs and almost killed him. And when people thank him for his service, they, he's such a humble dude, man. He, he just says, uh, you're worth it. And I mean, you'll see people just tear up and cry because it's just phenomenally powerful. And I told him I'm going to steal that and give him credit for, for it. But anytime somebody's struggling, like, you know, I think about my soldier, right? Cody, before he, you know, as he thought about killing himself, um, it was so important for me to, to convey to him how much he matters and that he's worth whatever care we could get him to keep him alive. You know what I mean? Getting him the help and the psychological uh, services and everything like that. And so any, anytime I know somebody, like there's a dude struggling because every, every person struggles, like everyone who's human has a struggle and people who feel that they're too ashamed and they want to isolate because of the struggle. It's like, dude, you're worth that connection with other brothers. You're worth self-enrichment, getting through it, growing through it. And it's a fight. You know, it's so much easier to self-medicate and dissociate and, and bury it for sure. But that, that'll lead to a, a deadly path pretty quick, you know? And um, if not deadly by like suicide, then deadly meaning destructive in other ways, you know, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's just self-sabotage, uh, self-limiting beliefs. There's so many ways we, we cut ourselves short because we don't think we're worth it. And I mean, I've seen that, especially like with survivor's guilt with dudes who, you mm -hmm. know, were in the military and deployed and lost a bunch of guys and came back. Like, why, why didn't I die? Why, why did I survive? You know? And, and I would just love on these guys. Um, because they're so valuable, you know, their lives are so, are so precious and anybody, anyway, I would believe that if, if you knew somebody who died in combat, because we all signed that contract, right. That's like, or who are we going to leave our stuff to? Right. Uh, you see these 18 year old kids doing it. It's just like, bro, talk about balls, man. That's such an honorable thing. I, I, I believe, but um, you know, you wouldn't, you'd want that person to live their most free life. You know, you'd want them to inherit that freedom that you didn't get. And uh, I would just hope that more people would believe that about themselves and mm. uh and not dwell on the darkness that kind of isolates them because i've seen buddies do that and i still check in on them you know to make sure they don't go down that path because they could you know um they're human so it's so important to just keep letting them know they're worthy of yeah. life basically man you, you can throw a rock and hit somebody it's got everyone's got something going on everybody's got stuff and yeah, i'll tell you yeah, what sure. the guy with the inner courage that says can i just tell you what i got going on it, you talk about being contagious there's someone else that'll say okay my turn i got some stuff going. everybody's got oh, something yeah. and so to believe sure. the lie that you're the only one struggling with something is a lie from the pit of hell to isolate you to yep. to make you get to a dark place where you feel like it's helpless and hopeless and uh, yeah. i'm telling you and you know as well, there are every every man you rub shoulders with, he's got some stuff and he's working through it and he's got some insecurities. He's got some dad issues. He's got some addiction issues. He's got we all got it, man. We need each other to say, hey, I can't do this alone. I, yep. I need I need some people to help me. And then in turn, I get to help other people. You know, I'm not just dumping my emotional baggage on everybody. I'm like, hey, now let me help you. Let's walk this mm -hmm. road together. And you got something if you you do that. Right. Yeah, man. Where do we get this book at, brother? Where, where are we going? So uh, it's you can go to my website, combatpsych.com. You can preview the book. I put the first three chapters there. Cody, who, again, survived suicide, mm -hmm. he wrote the intro. That's available as a part of the PDF. And then so is Austin's story about losing those. It was 12 guys when I wrote the book at the time. And uh, so you can preview the book. And if you like it, there's a link to get it on Amazon. Um, and then uh, I'm putting all these podcasts that i mean this is amazing like thank you for putting me on here but i'm attaching your guy embedding your guys's podcast interviews on the, the media page so if people don't want to read a book you can at least hear me talking about it um and then i am recording the audio book so that should be out in a couple months but uh yeah and then i'm, I'm actually working on um a little handbook on emotions and feelings from like a male perspective and it's it's going to be like a 50 pager um just to kind of describe some stuff going on in the mind and uh yeah maybe i could run it by you and your guys for a preliminary look before i publish it Ooh. but just it's on my heart man to kind of feed this community because there's uh yeah there's so many guys that don't want to open up 
still, you know, they, and this is really important to understand, especially about veterans. Uh, there's some stuff, man, they don't, they don't want to disclose to a practitioner mm -hmm. because of legal reasons yep. or because of stigma. Um, there's stuff that they, they're not going to tell their spouse. And so what I've noticed for myself and what's really cool. And if, if, if you're a veteran, like watching this, this is something to think about when you're that listening ear to them and you know a little bit about psychology, it doesn't take a lot. You can just read a couple of books about it, man. But when you can offer some counsel and especially just be a listening ear there, they'll open up about stuff. That's like, just that's been haunting them, mm -hmm. you know, for, for mm -hmm. a while potentially. And, uh, it's not always this dramatic, but there's some dudes where it's, it's life and death. And, um, it, being that guy that's reliable for a brother like that is so cool. So hopefully I'll be able to create some new little booklets and stuff to help. I don't know, just some content that'll, that'll feed their, their thought process, give them something to think about and perhaps not feel so isolated, but I just encourage anybody to, to go pick up any book on self-help or psychology that that's out there that could contribute to your wisdom in that regard and just be counseled to them because it's, it's profoundly needed right now. Amen. Well, brother, I appreciate it. You men in the herd, I, I want to hear more about feelings. Okay. I know that's a big thing we talk. I'm just kidding. You know, I do want to hear more about your feelings, but uh, we'll continue that conversation over there. Once again, man, I want to thank you for listening to the Pursuit of Manliness podcast. I want to end it how I started it. I want to encourage you, secure your spot in tribe. You're looking at 11 days left, Sunday, November 19, 2023. So let's say you run up on this podcast on uh, Tuesday, November 21st. You say, hey, is there still... It's closed. We open it up twice a year. Next one will be in spring. I hear from so many guys who say, yeah, I missed that one. I was going to get the next one. I was going to get the next one. Man, I wish I would have gotten tribe sooner. I totally get it. This is why I push it. This is why I promote it. I personally do not like promoting things, but this is something that over time, I just feel convicted. Yeah, we need to promote it. We need to tell guys, this is here. This is out here. It's a community, again, unlike anything you've been a part of, and you need to secure your spot today. Man, thanks for listening, and let's keep pursuing biblical manliness.